Peace be to all. Assalamu alaikum. Omar Abdul Malik, physician associate, doctor of health education, moderately fit, middle aged, endurance athlete, and family man. So, I want to talk to you guys about the importance of at least trying not to be the weakest link on a team, whether that's a, an athletic team or a healthcare team. So, in endurance sports, if you're running with a group, you can only go as fast as your slowest runner if you're trying to start and finish as a group. So the per person who is the slowest, that's gonna determine what time you guys tra cross the finish line as a group or the weakest person. If there's tasks like burpees or something to do, <laughs> the person who is weakest is going to uh, determine the quantity of points that you get. So similarly, and oftentimes I've seen this, if you have a weak link on your your healthcare team, somebody who just doesn't care, they're there for a paycheck, they show up late, you know, they don't manage the patients well, they leave you with a bunch of work, you know, they don't give a good report or something like that. You know, this reflects poorly on the entire team. So we have something called clinical outcomes. And this is irrespective of whether you're a doctor, nurse practitioner, a little old PA like me, <laughs> a CNA, patient care technician, respiratory therapist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, all these folks, the case manager, all of these people, these different positions and people and types thereof who comprise a healthcare team. It is a group effort, effort to help patients achieve optimal clinical outcomes. And what I try to do for myself, I'm not the brightest guy around. I'll admit that. I, I think I am average intelligence. Average. On a bell curve of IQs, I think the average IQ is about 100. That's me. <laughs> but I try to compensate for that by being the most professional PA that I can be, using my other field of expertise, so health education, talking to the patients, talking to the, the families, educating them about you know what's going on with their loved one provided that person's uh the point person of contact and they've got questions and doing so in an accurate and a compassionate manner uh, and i'm quite proud of that you know so i want to compensate for that so i don't so if you have a healthcare team nobody looks at me and says hey that guy over oh, to malik we got to get him out of there. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> and that's happened before. So I'm speaking from experience also. You know, I've been in healthcare for more than 30 years. <laughs> you know, so, so I've had my ups and downs and my challenges. But I learned from those. And sought out where I was weak. And tried to find ways to strengthen my weaknesses. And or compensate for them. Alright. So it's been a great uh, 30 years. You, you don't want to... You know, you don't want to be the weak link because because representation matters. Look at look at um these past Olympics with the breakdancer, female breakdancer from from Australia, Rachel Gunn. It was horrible. <laughs> so, what is she doing here? How did she get to be an Olympian? I just say, and what it did, it kind of took down the integrity of breakdancing being in the Olympics. It's like well. If this hor horrible performance is all you have to do to get to become an Olympian, a representative of your nation, you know, how hard could it be? <laughs> you know, and then the sister from Somalia, I think her name was uh, uh, Abukar, ran a horrible race because a family member did a favor to her for her <laughs> by getting her a spot on the the Olympic team for female sprinting. I forgot how many, I think a hundred yard, hundred meter dash or something. She came in so far behind all of the other runners, she wasn't even on the screen. She was overweight, she had no business being there. And it disgraced the entire con country and the integrity of Somali, the Somali athletic union or, or body. So she, she was clearly done a favor. But you don't, you don't want to do that. And if you've been in healthcare field, everybody's worked with somebody 
who you've said, how did this person get through school? How did this person get past the uh, national certification exam? How did this person get and keep a license? Don't let that be you, guys. Push yourself. Push yourself as hard as you can. Find out where your weakness is. Don't be that weakling. All right, if you want to be a PA like me, I've been a PA for almost 25 years now. It's a great profession, man. You're going to make, in terms of money, you're going to make over 100 grand doing it. You're going to do good for yourself and your family and your community and your patients. Uh, it's a two-year degree after your bachelor's degree. But um, you got to work really hard to uh, be worthy of even getting a, um, being granted a, a uh, recommendation and then something like an interview. And then getting through the PA program is tough. The boards are tough. It's all tough. But don't be weak, man. Push yourself. All right, guys. If you want to be a PA or a health educator, I'll do some more videos about that in the future, inshallah. Feel free to reach out to me. My uh, email is in the link. I'm proud to say that uh, some people have become PAs uh, by going through um, my mentorship. <laughs> and Allah, alhamdulillah, the Lord. All right. But I'm proud of that. Okay, guys. Take care. Peace. Look at this big hill I gotta run up. Take care, guys.